Thanks everyone. Hey, welcome to Music Victoria's grants and funding workshop. Um, we've had an overwhelming response to this one, which is certainly a sign of the times. Um, my name is Ash Bartlett. I'm the professional development manager at Music Victoria. And I'm really pleased to introduce you all to the wealth of knowledge among the speakers that join us on the chat today. Um, firstly though, I'd love to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, um, in which we're all virtually and respectively meeting on today. Um, I myself am on Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation and I pay my respects to elders past and present and give a warm welcome to any First Peoples that are with us today. Um, we'll get straight into it as I dare say it's safe to assume um, everyone that's here today are here for the same reasons and that's how do I get a grant and how do I get money quick? COVID-19 has really rocked the boat for all of us, but um, it's the same boat we're all in. Um, so our speakers today can help you. Um, so today we have Dane Hunter up, um, a grants officer at the Australian Council for the Arts, uh, John Atkins uh, from White Sky. Um, also with him is his colleague, Jason. Um, Olivia Allen, community arts officer at the city of Yarra and Hannah Brooks, a music business advisor from the city of Melbourne, and Adam Simmons, who is a grant writer and assessor, um, artist and composer himself, and founded um, organisation The Usefulness of Art. Um, so maybe we'll um, kick off with you, Dane, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Um, would you like to take us all through the Resilience Fund um, and the thinking behind the three streams. Sure. Yeah, survive, survive, adapt and create. Yes, will do. Um, and can I just check, is, is my upload speed good enough for everyone? How, how is it, Ash? It's pretty good for me. Thanks, Jane. Okay, good, all right, I'll roll ahead. Um, and apologies in advance, it's a bit jaggy. Um, the internet here in Sydney seems to have just ground to a halt. Um, but yes, um, the um, thing I'd like to talk about most today is uh, what we call the Resilience Fund um, and a bit of background about it. Um, when everything started going to hell with the pandemic, uh, um, we had a look at our grants and um, they went, hang on, we need to do something in quickly. Um, and so we froze all of our regular grant rounds and have funneled all of that money into these resilience funds. Um, and we don't know how long that will be going for. Certainly with the current $5 million we have in it, um, that will hopefully take us up to the next financial year. And then we'll be reassessing what we do with our future rounds based on you know, what, what happens with this virus. Um, but a little bit about the Resilience Fund. So we created it in response to the situation. Um, you know, naturally, um, a whole lot of us have lost some or all of our work. And um, um, it's been designed to help remedy that situation. The first stream um, that's available is called the Survive Fund. Um, and that was set up particularly to help people who have lost that money and B, have lost income um, after the, the period from the 1st of February onwards. Um, it's, not, um, it's not designed to be um, in income support. And I know that we're talking about those uh, income supports later. It's really a quick injection of cash to help people who are stuck. Um, for individuals and bands, um, um, that's a maximum of $2,000 uh, and it's a, it's a very quick application form. We just email or receipts uh, for sunk costs. Um, it gets assessed really quickly. We pay that within four weeks and you can apply for you know, things that you've spent money on or um, event cancellations. Um, um, Ash, if you want to jump in at any point, put your hand up because your video is really jaggy for me um, and I'll pause for you. Um, um, so, yes, yeah, the situation with the, with the survive round, um, it, all of our grants are still, are still quite competitive. Um, so it need, need, needs to have been a pretty significant thing. If, say, for instance, you've got a monthly 
gig at your corner hotel and that's been cancelled, it's, it's, that is not going to be as competitive as, say, having a tour cancelled or you've just rocked up at South by Southwest with all your freight and gear and suddenly things have gone bad. So it needs to be something of some significance. Um, um, we would love to, everyone that's applying to it deserves the money. We would love to give it to everyone, but it's, you know, $5 million doesn't stretch far. Uh, we're doing the best we can. We've assessed one round so far and the success rate was about 50%. Um, we'd like to make it more than that, but as I say, you know, it, it, it won't stretch very far. But if you've lost something, say you've hired a hole for your album launch and you, you bought all the stuff you needed for that, you know, that's a, that's a good one to come in and say, hey, look, we're really stuck. I've spent all the money on our credit card. Here's the evidence of it. Can you help us out? And that's an example of what people are coming in and having success with a survive round four. Um, the second stream is called ADAPT. Um, and this one was particularly set up for what we're seeing a lot of people do, which is to take what they had before and adapt it to the current environment. And a prime example of that is people who are, you know, they put together a tight touring show and they want to do that as an online performance. Or they might um, take an element of their practice and pivot it towards a different type of delivery method that doesn't require people to gather. Um, we've set that one up particularly for people, yeah, as I say, who, who have something ready to go and then you know, they're looking for a new way to do it. And this one is, it specifically states in the criteria that it's for doing things like um, if you need to buy equipment to do it, um, if you need to license software, if you need to get training to do it, um, if you need help setting up um, e-commerce, those types of scenarios, that's what this particular fund is for. Um, and yeah, we're getting a wide variety, but mostly from, from music, it's people pivoting to creating online content, a lot of YouTube channel stuff, a lot of streaming stuff. Um, um, and it's, that's been relatively successful, although yeah, we're, it's, it's all very new for us as well. So we're, we're learning on the fly as we go. Um, the third stream is called Create. And for people that have been familiar with uh, the Australia Council's programs before, it's the one that's most similar to arts projects for individuals and groups. So it's basically to get artists, musos, music, music workers back into work. It doesn't need to be artwork about or music about the coronavirus. It can, it can be what you would normally be doing. So that could be recording an album. It could be, um, you know, a composition. It's, it's not going to be touring at this point. Um, and I think we can expect it to be that way for a while. You really need to take into consideration with any of these projects. Are you putting any, any of your um, co-creatives at risk? Are you putting the public at risk? Because we will take that very seriously. Um, but yeah, the Create Stream, um, that's um, up to $10,000 um, for a band or group or individual um, to get you back into work. And both the ADAPT is the same amount of money, up to 10,000 for individuals, up to 20,000 for organisations. Um, and there's still rapid turnarounds as well. So that's it. We're, we're aiming to pay those within six weeks of your application. Um, we've changed our whole assessment process. It's, it's really rapid um, and, it's, and there's less obligation than you have with a normal grant applica application. So you still do need to report on it, but there's less. Um, you still do need to provide us with support material, but it's less onerous. Um, and ideally for both of those, they're designed to be tight. You come to us with a tightly wrapped little package. So we don't want th these big vast projects of which the 10,000 or 5,000 is a small component. We want you to apply for us for, for, for one little project that is, you know, that's the total amount of money that's going to get you back to working again. And that's why it was built that way. Um, should we do you want should I keep talking about other stuff, Ash, or, or should we dwell on dwell on the resilience fund for a while? Yeah. Um maybe we'll just stick on the re resilience fund for a moment. Um you've done a really good job at differentiating those three streams. Um but our eligibility can sometimes be really hard to determine. And in this like overwhelming climate, someone might find themselves 
you know, eligible for a, a few, not just one. Um, so what advice mm -hmm. could you provide to people on, on their research and, and planning to support people in their decisions on making, on, um, yeah, deciding which grant to go for? Yeah, I, I, I caught most of that. Um, okay, so eligibility with Australia Council, it's actually very simple eligibility. If you're an Australian citizen or permanent resident, you are eligible to apply. Um, that's the easiest bit. Um, the, the hard bit is being competitive. Um, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the three. So um, you can apply for each of these grants as many times as you want, but you can only receive each one once. So you can, um, you know, I, you could you could potentially be successful in getting a survive, adapt, and create. But once you've got one of each, you can't apply anymore. Um, and because we have rolling applications, if you get knocked back, we're not going to give feedback. We don't have that capacity at the moment. You know, we're we're all working from home and in difficult difficult situations. So it's just try again. And you know, it might you might want to find it up around the edges. A lot of people are rushing these in. You still need to work on them. It's gonna. It, you, you still need to do the groundwork to make it a strong application. But yeah, don't be disheartened if you get knocked back. Come come in again, and you know you might want to just reshape your application. Um, I've, and I can see we've got some up with that. Can create be applicable for acts that were ready to launch? just prior to the virus. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by acts, but um, if you, if you um, we don't fund things retrospectively. So we won't cover the costs of things that have already been occurred in the past. However, if you have a, have a project that you've done creative development on and you're, you want to apply for the next stage of that, whatever it is, then that stage of the project you can apply for. Um, and that's what how a lot of people break up projects in applications. They'll go, you know, creative development, rehearsal and creative, um, you know, performance and touring. Um, there's, there's a number of ways to do it. But if, you, if, if you've already got something rehearsed up to a point or, you, something, you know, you've done the development of it, you can come in to create for the next stage. Um, yeah. the, uh, next question, the create stream, is this round as competitive as previous rounds in this style of grant? Well, we can't answer that yet. I don't know. Um, it will be competitive um, and we'll probably have a clearer idea um, after we do one or two of them. Um, currently, our success rate is about 16, 17%. Um, I suspect it will be higher than that. How much higher? I just can't say. Um, I have an act just back from Euro, Euro US writing trip was looking to launch a single and tour in Q1 2020. Well, I assume you mean 2021. Um, or, or actually, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a question about applying for touring. I'd be really careful about it, you know, particularly to the US. We know that they have not handled this situation very well. Um, and it's looking like them being really messy with it further. In, um, I can't give specific advice because we're government and we have to follow the government's health advice. However, I, I personally, if I was applying, I wouldn't be applying to do anything in Europe or America, maybe in the first half of next year. Um, you, might, you might apply to tour Australia first half of next year, just as a rule of thumb. But also, if you're, if you're applying to do things that require people to gather, make sure you talk about your contingency plan in the application, because then we'll know that you're taking it seriously and you've got a plan B. Um, hey, Dane. Will grants receive counted? Yeah, sorry, Ash, yeah. Sorry, um, would you be able to um, provide some advice on reporting on your grant for projections and consolidating expenses after? Um, yes. To be honest, I haven't actually had a look at the reports for these new ones. Um, but I know basically it, it's the same with all of our grants. You, you, need to sh you need to have spent the money on what you applied to spend the money on. Um, we, we don't ask for receipts unless we think there's been a problem. Um, but generally, we, we like to see that, you know, if you've applied to do recording, that 
we would love a copy of the CD. That's great evidence. With our logo on the back, even better, because um, that's part. If you contract folks, um, um, if it's to do concerts, we like copies of the tour posters. And to us, that's the best evidence you can provide. Uh, and that's what we want to see. It's actually fairly easy to report on a grant and these ones will be even easier. Just make sure you do what you said you'd do. Hope that helps, yeah. Um, do you want me to keep answering a couple more of these or, or is it time to move on, Ash? Um, yeah, go for it for a few more minutes, Dean. Okay, uh, will grants receive counted as income for job seeker, job keeper? Now, we don't give direct tax advice, but generally, if you, t if you receive money in your bank from a grant, the government will consider that income and you need to take that into consideration. Um, given that a lot of albums will be home recorded now, what can you apply for in that situation for the CREATE grant? Does mastering promotion count if the mixing has been done at home? Yeah, absolutely. And people are doing great recordings at home now. Uh, we're, we're, we're very non-prescriptive about where and what you do. Uh, but the assessors will want to hear what you've made before and hear vision of what this new project is. And usually that's the type of thing that will get you over the line. Um, so recording studios, because they have the same problem that everyone has, get having a whole lot of people in a room together. Um, and I know that some recording studios are working to adapt that have uh, isolated rooms with different um, sources of air and no one's allowed to hang out in the green room type of deal. Um, so I know some of the recording studios are starting to come back online and have made adaptations. We don't make recommendations, but I'd, I, would, I would check it out because I'm sure there are some studios in and around Melbourne now that are adapting to allow you to go in and record. Um, I just thought that might be helpful. Um, I'll, I'll quickly wrap through a couple Please share the link of the applications. Yes, I'll give Ash a link when this is over to put up on the Music Vic page. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll do one more question for now. Already recorded EP and Jan, still releasing in October. Can we apply to Create Fund to help with promotion and release? Oh, yes, yes, you can. So a marketing package is something that you can come into us for. Um, usually we will, we will want to see that you're working with a professional or that certainly helps. So if you've got a publicist on board, a publicist can often give you a media plan uh, for how they will get your music out. Sure, it's great to buy some ads on Facebook, uh, but if you're going to do it seriously and come in for a good chunk of money, it's good. you need to evidence that you're doing it properly. Um, all right. Well, I might handball back to you, Ash, and if we've got more time at the end, I'll answer more questions. Cool. Thanks, Dane. Um, maybe just one final one. Uh, sure. Any grants tailored toward emerging or less established artists? So I imagine that would be the CREATE Fund? Yeah, so, um, so all of our grants are available to all Australians and we support um, early career artists. We support particularly First Nations artists, um, people from culturally diverse backgrounds um, and people who um, uh, experience disability. Um, emerging artists, great too you still need to make a red hot case and we want to hear your red hot tracks. Um, but you know, if, if you're at the age of 15 and you've, you know, gone through the, you know, kind of triple J on earth Avenue and had some joy that way, share those tracks. We support that stuff. If you're, you know, taking the more troubadour approach to music, great. Bring that along, whatever it is, whatever your practice is and whatever stage it is, it's about excellence for us and excellence is, um, experienced and realised in different ways, and we're a broad church. Nice. Thanks, Heatstein. Um, that was really helpful. Uh, John from White Sky, I might head to you uh, if you're ready. Yeah, cool. Hey, guys. Um, I've got Jace with me as well from White Sky, who's going to kind of run through a few things with me. Um, just a really quick overview of what we'll be chatting about is uh, some basic information around um, job seeker and also job keeper. Um, we're going to kind of go through some, I guess, eligibility criteria around both um, and also a couple of like case studies and common structures that we're seeing and a lot of questions coming through around how, you know, how it affects certain 
um, individuals um, with certain structures going on. So we'll kind of go through a few um, ones, common ones that we've kind of seen. Um, and also we're going to touch base on any other avenues of potential, you know, income to help um, fund your business and also any other, I guess, stimulus from the ATO that they've released um, to date. So we, we understand that, you know, the music industry, you know, it's quite, unique um, the ATO are releasing information quite gradually to us um, you know we've get the feeling that um, they've kind of had the music industry at the bottom of the pile in terms of how to measure all these um, stimulus and how to actually go about applying so yeah it is unfortunate that the end the information is coming through quite slowly and there's a lot of scenarios which it's quite evident they haven't thought of which affect you know our industry so um, you know, as an account, it has been quite difficult to juggle the, uh, you know, the demand from the, from the industry of wanting answers, but also trying to get as much information across as possible as quickly as we can. So, Jace, do you want to kick us off with a few um, notes around, I guess, yeah, job seeker and job keeper? Sure thing. Hello, everyone. Um, to start off, I think we'll start from like the most basic level and the, not the one that's at the front of everyone's mind, which is job keeper, but job seeker which is essentially just the unemployment benefit um, we've had a lot of artists that have need to go on this because they don't necessarily meet the job keeper requirements so it's a great fallback option um, it's not in terms of the difference of amounts you're getting slightly less than job keeper uh, but it's not it's not too different it's roughly depending on your personal situation it's roughly four hundred dollars less a fortnight so it's not it's not too bad the, the government has topped up the regular or the base job seeker entitlements with coronavirus supplements and additional like one-off stimulus payments so it's it's a great option to be on if that's sort of what you need to do um, there are a couple of things to keep in mind that you can't claim job seeker and job keeper at the same time so it's either one or the other um, the thing with job seeker is it's a, it's slightly less risky than going on job keeper. With job keeper, there's a lot of rules and eligibility criteria that you need to meet. Um, going on job seeker, it's it's a matter of getting in touch with Centrelink, setting up your MyGov, and just going through the steps with them. And that leads us on to job keeper, which has been getting a lot of airtime lately. Um, this is the scheme designed by the government and the ATO to help businesses with employees and directors and that sort of thing uh, through the form of a $1,500 per fortnight subsidy per person. Um, this $1,500 amount, it's, it's, it's a flat amount across the board. Um, if you're an employee that earns more than $1,500 more than $1, a fortnight, you should still be getting your regular wage. If you're someone who was on less than $1,500 a fortnight, then it's up to your employer to then bump you up to that $1,500 level, um, which is a nice bonus. Keep in mind that this is all still accessible and taxable income. Um, JobKeeper, it's open to all, all different entity types, sole traders, partnerships, companies, trusts, so everyone's covered, um, which is great. All this sort of information has been developing over time where it, that might not have been the case at the start, but the government has realized there were initial holes in their announcements, so it's getting more coverage as time goes on, which is definitely helpful for the music industry. Um, the first payments won't be released until May, that they'll cover the April period. So they, these payments that you receive from the, um, from the ATO, they're always paid out in arrears. So you will get paid before the business receives the assistance from the ATO. And finally, there's a, there's a ton of eligibility criteria, which John is gonna run through with you a bit more. Um, but the good thing to know is that the scheme runs through until December. So once you get approved to be in the scheme, you're in there till subsep until September and you don't need to keep, sort of, you don't need to justify yourself every month. Although there are reporting requirements that you do need to comply with. And it's, I believe it's really simple stuff, just a matter of 
reporting your actual turnover figures to the ATO. Uh, John, do you want to run through the eligibility? Yeah, cool. I've seen a few questions kind of come through the chat, but I'll, I was going to kind of run through those regardless. Um, if I miss anything, I'll, I'll refer back to the questions as well. Um, but around, around the eligibility, um, there's a little bit of like high admin that, you know, if, you, if you're past the, if you're not a government body or you haven't declared bankruptcy, that kind of stuff, you obviously can continue on with. But um, the first basic test is um, needing to show a drop of 30% of income, and that is, I guess, income received at top level, not profit um, at the bottom. Um, and at the moment, they're assessing um, comparative periods. So whether it's March, the month of March, the month of April, the month of May, comparing to that time last year, 2019. Now, of course, the music industry is cyclical. We, we understand that, but um, we're deeming that it you assess it on cash um, basis or accrual, depending on your reporting um, requirements. Um, there is an alternative test, which they haven't actually released information on via the commissioner. Um, say you're a record label, for example, and the actual effect of coronavirus is yet to be determined on a, I guess, income level basis. You know, it, it might not be showing itself for six or 12 months down the track. Um, so there might be some rulings under this alternative test um, to kind of put a case forward for your business to say, you know, we are actually unclear of how the touring has actually impacted record sales. So when that does get released, that's going to be hopefully a good opportunity for these type of businesses who may not be able to prove that 30% drop off immediately. Um, you might also be a new entity that don't have any activity for, you know, this time last year to compare that to. Um, so there's going to be some rulings around that too. So unfortunately, as you haven't released that, but, um, you know, again, they're not really thinking about the music industry and the cyclical nature of the income. Uh, but at this point, we can only go by comparing data from current um, against last year's numbers. Um, Unfortunately, tax returns and lodgements do need to be up to date. Um, they initially released a, uh, a point that you needed to actually have them all lodged by, I think it was the 12th of March, um, if you're an individual. Um, and we've, we were kind of a little bit you know, nervous about that point because we've got clients uh, under our umbrella who haven't got, done their tax returns as yet, but um, they've relaxed that a little bit and they're looking likely they're gonna extend that to the actual tax return deadline. So if your tax return deadline is uh, 15th of May, then we better get cracking on completing those tax returns um, because it's all about them having that data to be able to um, do a, you know, a bit of a review of the activity going on. Um, each individual is eligible for only one JobKeeper payment. So if you have a full-time job on the side and your employer have come to you um, asking if you would like to enter the, the stimulus, um, you won't be able to double dip, I guess, on any sole trader activity going on. It might be a bit cleaner and admin free for you to accept and jump into that offer um, through your employer. Um, and that puts the onus on them as well to be ensuring the eligibility um, you also do need to be eligible as an employee, which I'll get into shortly. Um, and it also depends, I guess, what structure you've got going on. So if you are a partnership with five band members, um, you are entitled, that entity itself is entitled to one JobKeeper payment, which obviously could cause a bit of friction amongst the band members. But um, as a starting point, it's kind of important to uh, assess whatever what everyone's got on, what everyone is uh, got going on in their individual life? Do they have a, a full-time job? Have they applied for job seeker? Um, and then you can determine if it's worth the entity itself um, claiming the job keeper through um, one individual in regards to that. Um, a common kind of case study we're seeing a lot of is um, a company, a small business, a band with three directors, but no ongoing payroll. Um, so under that scenario, that entity itself, as long as they meet all the eligibility, would be entitled to one JobKeeper payment. 
Um, you know, so I guess we're getting a lot of questions about how do we move forward with this kind of scenario. Um, and, you know, our advice would be just to consider all avenues. So if you've got a, um, one of the individuals might have a, you know, photography business on the side that he's, um, he or her might have income levels that has dropped 30%, they may be eligible. It might be worth for them to sign up directly under the JobKeeper scheme and receive that money directly where your band member two might not actually have anything else going on outside of that band. Um, then they've got the option of going to Job Seeker directly uh, through Centrelink and then band member three who may not have anything going on, we can actually claim them through the, the company or the band itself. And then I guess it comes down to band politics if you wanted to assess who's winning and losing in all those situations as well and determining how you kind of manage the money. Um, that's pretty much all on JobKeeper. I'll have a quick read of the queries, but I just wanted to kind of highlight some other, I guess, stimulus um, areas the ATI have released. I'll get back to, I guess, any questions around JobKeeper. Um, but basically the ATI are showing a lot of leniency at the moment. So if you do have a large debt with them um, or you, you owe, um, some outstanding obligations, I guess, get in touch with them directly is my advice to find out exactly what you can take advantage on. Um, we're seeing a lot of payment plans being put on hold. They're not charging any interest or fines. Um, I recommend getting in touch and just seeing exactly what they are um, allowing for you and your business. Um, there's also, I guess, you know, considering how this affects job seeker and job keeper, there are avenues amongst the industry um, to, that are showing a lot of support as well for artists and, and bands. So, you know, PPCA obviously um, have released that they have been releasing advances um, depending on, I guess, your track record and what kind of numbers you've shown. Same as APRA, um, you know, hit up your label or publisher about any potential advances. Um, obviously, keep in mind that you don't want to be, you know, seeking a decent advance right now and then having an effective job keeper payment. So I guess be strategic about how you're going, managing um, the money on that side. Um, and from an ATO point of view, if you are an employer and you've been paying pay as you go to your, uh, on behalf of your employees, there is a scheme called cash boost where you'll be eligible to, I guess, get any pay as you go from the Jan to March period refunded. Um, back into the business um, and also for I guess July to September period as well so they are being quite um, friendly with a reimbursement there on all pay as you go obligations. Um, there's also state level release I won't go into the grants obviously there's a lot of information coming through on the grant level but um, there's other relief if you've got any payroll tax um, obligations they are um, relieving any obligations around that and I guess there's a few other things like, you know, rent relief. Um, any, some states are actually offering utility relief. Um, I know in Perth, they're offering a 2.5K refund on certain um, electricity suppliers, for example. So do your research on state level as well, because there might be some little avenues there to help uh, subsidise the, the loss of business. Cool. And I, I think what, one of the things we want to emphasise most to people who are going through these processes, applying for job seeker, applying for job keeper, applying for grants, whatever you're doing is just make, make sure you keep on top of your records. Um, I know it's a bit yawn coming from accountants and, but we like to stress this stuff. It's important. Um, for example, with job, job keeper, the ATO is giving themselves the ability to look back five years. So in five years time, you might get a call from the ATO saying you you applied for this five years ago, we're going to take a look and make sure this was all legit. Um, so just keep that stuff in mind. If you're having any uncertainty or second thoughts, just can consult a professional, talk to an accountant, run your case by them. They'll let you know if you're on the right track or not. Thanks guys. And are you able to provide any um, documents or resources um, that will assist people while they're making their applications? Yeah, so maybe Ashra can send it through to you. Um, a bit of a, a checklist slash um, guide in regards to taking, I guess, the responsibility on of enrolling within Job 
keeper. Um, as Jay said, there's a, there's a fair bit of red tape that we're really mindful of. And we we, I guess the main message is making sure you do have all the information at hand and you are keeping records and everything is all legit because what we, you know, what we don't know is how hard the ATA may come down the track. Um, we know that they're implementing all this stuff to help out. But obviously, you know, they, they're mindful that there might be cases where people might take the piss and um, might ruin it for the rest of us. <laughs> um, awesome. Thanks. Thanks heaps, John and Jace. Um, Olivia from the city of Yarra, we might head to you now if that's, um, if you're around. Perfect. Yes, I'm around. <laughs> you can hear me good? I can. Yeah. Great, excellent. Um, uh, thank you so much, Ash and Music Victoria, for pulling this all together. And it's um, really nice to see some familiar faces on here. Um, and unfortunately, under these circumstances, um, that we're all coming together. Um, so from City of Yarra's point of view, um, they reacted quite quickly to put together um, a COVID-19 community and economic support package. And I'll just go through it very quickly and then direct you to the resources that you can um, go to to find out more information about how you can apply for these things. So they put together a package of 7.46 million, which will be rolled out over 15 months. Um, and that includes a period of direct response as well as what might happen in the recovery period. So there's a certain amount of money that's been um, allocated to the response crisis um, phase, um, but that's not the end. So there will be more coming. Um, the So as part of that 7. Point, for six million, the council acknowledged the huge contribution of the creative sector in Yarra towards the economy and the culture. Um, and so they've put aside some um, two rounds of, um, of uh, funding. The first one uh, that I'll talk about just briefly is the creative business grants. And they were um, uh, open to um, businesses and sole traders for up to $5,000 um, to um, be able to respond, adapt and uh, undertake development during this phase. And so it might be specifically about looking at how you're readapting your business model to respond to what's happening. And it might be around equipment, um, it might be about skills development, or it might be about other kind of programming. Um, so that pool was $60,000 and it is currently on hold. And um, the panel met on Thursday to um, look at the, the current round of applicants that, that came in and we'll be announcing shortly whether or not that's going to be reopened. Um, but there are also, um, and I would direct you to that now, um, through the Business Yarra, there is also um, um, some funding that's gonna be made available for businesses as part of that. And so that's obviously a broader pool that involves creative businesses as well as non-creative businesses. Um, so to be in touch with the latest announcements of when that's coming out, I direct you to our Yarra um, website, um, specifically to the Business Yarra um, website, and you can subscribe to the e-newsletter and you'll get the announcement straight away, um, but also the social media channels, so um, Yarra City, City of Yarra at, on Instagram and then also on Facebook. Um, the other round, which is um, uh, sort of urgent to talk about because it's going to be closed on Sunday at 11.59 is the Creative Community Grants. And this specific grant is available for individuals or groups um, and it's particularly around outcomes. So you can't apply for something that's not going to have an outcome um, and, you can't, and it's different to the business grant because it's not about development of your business model. It's about a project that's for an outcome. Uh, so individuals can apply for up to 2,000. Um, that 2,000 could actually be largely around equipment, which is not traditionally what is on available through a grant program. Um, and then if you're a group, um, you can apply up for up to 5,000. Um, it doesn't apply for businesses. So um, if, you're, if you are a business, you can look at doing partnerships with a not-for-profit entity um, to create a project for an outcome. Um, but you would not be the applicant for that project, but, but you would be a, a partner on it. Um, 
so that's specifically around again about adapting creating and developing during this period so um where we've spoken about existing projects um you can redevelop um a project to be um specific for this period um but it's not about funding anything retrospectively and it's not just just purely about readapting what you've already got it's it is something that is kind of looking at developing something in a new way um, they're open again the theoretically for their, they're for activities that go right up until december but i think that again it is a very competitive process and so um, i think the panel will be looking at how you're directly responding during this period um, the other thing to mention that I've been advising most grant applicants that I speak to is um, don't package something that's bigger than what you have the potential to do. Um, this is something that's stimulating activity. We're not expecting people to put in applications that are incredibly am ambitious and expensive and is going to get you into further debt. Um, and that surprisingly is sometimes how people approach these grants to be competitive. Um, we, want, we want the applications to be um, achievable and realistic and put you in a good position. Um, you might look at then, this is a, the first stage of a bigger project later on, but and this is the first part of it, um, but don't apply for the whole project if you're only going to get up to $2,000. Uh, the other opportunity that we have um, is that the Leaps and Bounds Music Festival, which I produce, is going ahead in June. So it's actually been brought forward a month and it's going to be an online festival. Um, traditionally, and um, again this year, we go out to um, uh, venues to program the festival, um, as well as record stores and record labels and studios. So if you're an independent artist, you can't apply for to be part of the festival, but you can partner with a venue or a record label or a studio to, um, to put forward a project. Um, those applications are currently open and it's for, for up to $1,000 for the project and you also get um, promotion and marketing and support through um, the council uh, as well as our media partner PBS um, and uh, we have also had a focus on underrepresented artists um, and but this year it, it, there is no other programming criteria around it except for the fact that it just happens between the 11th the 11 and 20th of June um, and it um, is for Yarra based uh, venues and labels and uh, record stores. Um, but the twist is that it doesn't necessarily have to be music content. So you could potentially um, do a yoga presentation with a, a bunch of musicians. Um, so it's, it's really a broad, broad church in terms of how we define the culture of music in Yarra. Um, so yeah, the only sort of in closing, I would say get onto those creative community grants if you're intending to apply for one before 11.59 on Sunday. Um, and you can call us and speak to an officer about your project. I highly recommend that you do that to avoid making simple mistakes. Um, the number is, um, and I'll get Ash to send it round, but it's 9205-5555. And if you'd like to speak to me directly, uh, you can call me on 9205 five zero three eight and i can speak to you about those creative community grants as well as the leaps and bounds um uh opportunity that's thanks. it um, that's awesome um and thanks to the city of yara who do wonderful things for the, for the music community um hannah brooks is the music business advisor at uh the city of melbourne um hannah if you're with us could you unmute and Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Ash and Music Victoria, for bringing us all together today. So I'm going to be very uh, give you a quick overview of grants that are open now and then that are, are coming up. And I've also given Ash um, a link to our music e-news, which I would encourage you to subscribe to because that will give you um, an update on all the opportunities as we move forward. And I'll give you my contact details at the end, just in case you want to 
ask any more questions. So the COVID-19 quick response grants, there's two streams. One is for small business grants and the other is for arts grants. They are both closing tomorrow, Friday at 12 p.m. noon. So if you are keen, um, I suggest that you look into it um, quickly. The arts grants, um, I presume the majority of you will uh, be eligible for those or interested for musicians. They're up to $4,000 and there are two streams. One is for online and you need to complete that by the 30th of June. And the second is for development. So if you're looking to present works in the city of Melbourne in the future, or you'd like to start some development um, by the 30th of June. The, the, you don't have to be a musician living in the city of Melbourne to apply for those, but you do need to be showing that you're going to be presenting or you have um, intention of presenting in the city of Melbourne. For the quick response, small business grants, they um, have three streams. Uh, one is, the first one is capital works, so upgrading any equipment. Second is online. And the third is for training and development. Um, so we've just released the first round of the successful applicants for the small business this morning. So if you want to have a look at some of the examples of who's been successful, you can go to the City of Melbourne website and, and type in quick response business grants. So I, I realise that they're closing tomorrow. So um, they have been open since the 26th of March. So if you're keen, you can contact me a bit later. Um, coming up, um, what else is open at the moment is our Arts Melbourne Signal Screen and Sound Commissions. They're for artists 16 to 25, so they're open at the moment until the 15th of May. Um, and our event partnership programme will be opening on the 1st of May. Um, looking forward, what might be relevant is our normal annual arts grants, uh, which normally open around, around May or June every year. They're likely to be shifted a little bit forward to uh, mid later in the year. Again, the Music E-News is going to give you an update on that. Uh, quick access arts, uh, which are normally open. There may be opportunity down the track for more of those. And uh, Melbourne Music Week, as you all know, is held normally in November and they'll be finalising when their expressions of interest will be opening as well. So again, the Music E-News will give you an update on that or you can follow Music Week on social media. And the last one, I think, is our normal, small, I'm calling it normal, so it's non-COVID-19. Uh, small business grants. The second round is due to open in July. So if you are a business located in the city of Melbourne, that's up to 30,000 for startup or up to 20,000 for development, which is actually a new category and quite interesting for music businesses. So that's all from me. I will leave my email now and if you want to ask me any more questions given that the COVID are closing tomorrow, I can answer them or direct you across council as you need. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, very much appreciated. Um, hey, Adam Simmons from The Usefulness of Art. Um, is Adam? Hello. Hey. Um, Adam, would you like to kick off with um, your background and your expertise and um, any advice on grant writing? Uh, certainly. I've got too much to say. I'll try and not say too much. Um, but yeah, just uh, I am a musician across different styles, playing different woodwind instruments. I've been doing that since 1990. Um, I teach uh, composed music. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of grants over the years um, through across all those activities. Um, a few years ago, I put together a concert series that came out of considering a fellowship for um, application for the Australia Council, which I was not successful in getting but at that time, but I came up with a plan and managed to realise it anyway and was able to then use the basis of that application and project 
to get some funding for different components of it. Um, so, um, uh, and then, so that series was called The Usefulness of Art, uh, which there's a long story of where that comes from. It was inspired by Auguste, Auguste Rodin, the sculptor. Um, but it's since become more, and it's a thing that has underpinned my practice in different ways. Um, but it's now become more a business, which is an initiative of mine aimed to create opportunity and understanding through presentation, mentoring, consultancy, and advocacy in the arts. Um, and but coming from a lived experience and strong understanding of how art does how it's fundamental to our lives and uh, in helping build community. Uh, and so through that, I, uh, I am doing things of working in a pro bono way, working uh, through a role with the Victorian Jazz Industry Strategic Action Plan, been mentoring a few different people. I was going to be presenting Flora Carbo at the Amersfoort Jazz Festival in just a few weeks in Am uh, Amersfoort in the Netherlands as part of a laureate program in the National Festival. That's not happening. Um, uh, and, and helping different um, individuals and organisations with grant writing assistance with the notion of trying to help people learn what to do um, and not just do it for them, you know, teaching people how to fish. Um, so yeah, I have written probably 70 to 80 grants, I think, um, since about the year 2000. Um, calculating it uh, 18 months or so ago, I'd, I've had about a 60% success rate, which seems above average. Uh, and I've sat on a few assessment panels as well as a peer assessor for different organisations. So, um, where I'm coming from today is just to try and give you some ideas to consider, not specifically for this period, but um, just general grant writing. Uh, the, the challenge is that it's competitive and it's going to be competitive like no other time right now um, as everyone is looking for avenues. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, so you, you do have to have a good project. Um, you have to know why you're doing it. Don't, it's, it's not about just getting free money. Um, it's not a handout. Um, you do need to put your best foot forward and put a, a strong case and you need to consider, well, why am I doing this? Um, but it's also in that way that it's not free money. It's it's not something that we should be shamed about asking for. It's not something that's not for you, um, and that sectors, you know, all sectors are actually getting funding and support in different ways. In the arts, I feel often there's a sense of oh, why are they getting money? Um, but actually, you look at all the different areas that are actually getting support. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why, you know, the arts is not less uh, deserving of support than any other sector. It is about investment uh, in order to help you generate further activity. Um, and that could be through the creation of new work that generates um, activity. It's recording, manufacture, it's touring, uh, presentation, all these professional development, all of these are about investing uh, that then generates something uh, further. It's not just about getting money. And so at the beginning, um, there was the thing of, you know, well, how do we get funding? How do we get money? They're two different questions. Um, if you approach funding from, I just need some money, that's not going to help get you there. If you approach it from the place of, I've got this great idea, I, I can see how this is building upon where I am, and I just need a little kick 
to get over there and up a, a notch, then you, your application will actually resonate. Um, Adam, are there any common errors that you see regularly made in the grant writing process? Uh, very commonly, just people not reading um, and answering the questions. Um, I was guilty of it the first grant that I did. I kind of went, oh, I don't really know that. I, I'll just obscure that with some talk and flowery bits. Um, and I um, credit Kurt Olofsson at the Australia Council many years ago, who uh, didn't tell me what to write, but he very he, he gave me the opportunity to resubmit and just said, go through, answer each question. And, and you can make each question basically the heading of, um, and you just go through those things. Um, can I and, jump in on that one too, Adam? Yep. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I've just done a quick thing of why you won't get a grant. And here's my like top picks. One, you've, you've supplied broken links to your support material. That happens in about 10% of music grants. Number two, your manager wrote the grant and you can't hear the artist's voice or the passion in the project. Number three, there's no detail in the budget and you're not paying musicians properly. And number four, you haven't talked to a grant officer. So get all, do all of those things right and you're halfway there. Sorry, Adam, I'll, I'll let you continue. No, no, that's great, Dave. And, one, and that's one of my key bits of advice that I got from Eugene Ball years ago was speak to a grants officer first up. Um, and, uh, and Dane, you can stick your fingers in your ears but, uh, and the others, but um, the suggestion, even if you know the answer, just ask some stupid questions that it actually just allows you to get a relationship with your grant officer. Um, and, you know, you, it's sometimes it's, they can only tell you so much, but it can be the things they don't tell you that speak very loudly of what you need to do. Um, and uh, don't, you, you can't get them, they, they're not going to tell you what your project is, but they will help you try and hone uh, what, um, how to address the criteria, um, and um, and just you know, and help give you uh, a framework. Um, the I f do feel that time is going to run very short. Um, do be ambitious, but try and look for the next step. Don't uh, uh, even in a normal time. Um, if you're an emerging artist, then just look for the next thing. Um, be modest in your request, acknowledge that, and just say, well, I'm here, I'd like to get to there. Um, and it's that realistic but ambitious, uh, I, I can get there if you just give me a leg up. Um, Put your time, don't rush into any of this. There are, I know there's grants to do tomorrow, um, but do try and plan. Um, and if you can't get in tomorrow, don't worry, there will be another round for something coming up soon. You're, you're better to take time to consider the project and go, yeah, I really believe in this. Because if you actually get the funding, then you need to actually do it and you need to want to do it um, and for it to actually get you somewhere. So that's, that's important. Um, something to consider if you're not successful is you now have a business plan. So you can even consider that as you're writing the grant. What do I do if I don't get the money? How can I achieve this? Um, and have that uh, backup plan so that maybe you can do it in six months and then you come back with the next step and you're able to say to the funding body, hey, I've done this now, but here's the next step. And that um, you, it doesn't stop you from uh, actually doing something. So try and find ways that, you know, because with a, a 16, 20% success rate, even 50% success rate for funding, People miss out, and so if you're waiting to be part of that 
twenty percent, then you, it, until you do something, well, then you you may uh, not do anything for the next four years until you get to the fifth year where you actually get some money. But if you can demonstrate, well, I do do this, then you're building up that track record that can help uh, help demonstrate your capacity to actually um, complete things. Budget, really quickly, don't be afraid. Often people go, oh, I don't know what to do with the budget. Just write your costs, write your income, and there'll be a difference. And that hopefully there's money missing, and that just becomes basically what you're asking the month, uh, ask the amount you're asking for. It can be that simple, and the uh, the online grant system makes that much easier now. It does ca calculate that often for you, um, but just you don't have you know you can maybe massage after you've worked it out and you're asking for too much, but just in the beginning, just write down everything. And don't worry, at the end you can ba balance it. But don't be afraid of the numbers. Um, and ask somebody for help. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think what else, because I'll wrap it up. <laughs> That's great uh, advice, Adam. The, uh, as Dane's saying, support materials just make make sure they're relevant don't try and put too much in there is way too much uh, there's the assessors will be looking at way too many applications to give every every um, bit of information you supply um, it's f the full time you might want to so make it relevant pertinent succinct um, unlike me um, and uh, trying to there's something else I was thinking. Just had some, sorry. I assume that the assessors in the room will know anything about you or your art form. Um, the, and if there is an assessor who is from your art form and might know you, there may actually be a conflict of interest, which means the one person who's in that room has to go out. So um, do be clear speak and explain different things um, and just be aware that there's uh, you, you do need you don't want to explain everything but don't just you don't use jargon and don't assume that people will understand um, where you're coming from um, okay. if I'm, I'm happy also to be contacted um, at uh, I can give that here as well um, and particularly just mention that you came to me via here. Um, I'm, I'm not spruiking properly at this time because I feel um, slightly mercenary trying to say, oh, I'll write your grants for you. Um, but yeah, I am happy to try and offer advice uh, where possible um, uh, and navigate some of these things. Thanks, Adam. And we've just had some excellent advice on the chat line as well. Get someone else to read it first, especially if they're not an expert, like not a musician. Um, did it make sense to them? That's, that's a great point. Um, thank you, everyone. We've run out of time. We've had such a huge amount of info today. Um, so we will be uploading all of the resources that were um, sent via the chat on our uh, Facebook gallery post where this recording will also be posted. Um, you can find it on the Music Victoria website as well. Um, my name's Ash uh, from Music Victoria. My email is just ash at musicvictoria.com.au if you want to get in touch with any questions. Um, and it's been great having everyone. Um, we'll see you next time. We actually have an event tomorrow, um, tomorrow afternoon called Ask Us Anything. It's a Q&A forum for musicians and we've got a music publisher, distributor, uh, record label and band camp. Um, so send in your questions prior to the event. Um, you can find it on the Music Victoria Facebook events and hopefully you'll get your answer tomorrow. Um, thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Ash. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.